Okay. Sorry, I can't do this without standing. It's a uh, habit. So, I've been thinking about, well, I was listening to an NPR article that made me think a little bit about invasive species and, you know, sort of what that means. Um, I'm not an ecologist. Uh, I'm not <laughs> an expert in any way in this field. Uh, anybody know what this is? Bandit to be or something. Horsefly or deerfly, maybe? Gadfly. Not an invasive, so why a gadfly? And this guy is. No, come on. Aristotle? The gadfly. Aristotle? Socrates. Socrates. Oh. Now there's the gadfly um, because he sort of just buzzed around um, stinging people with uh, questions that were. Pretty annoying. Now, I'm not setting myself up to be Socrates, but I am annoying. Um, and I do like to ask questions to get people to sort of rethink things. Now, of course, we all remember what happened to Socrates. Um, anybody remember this? Poison hemlock. Something about the Drank hemlock. the hemlock. <laughs> uh, my favorite uh, quote about this is, do you know what Socrates' last words were? I drank what? <laughs> So, we consider all these things invasive species, depending on where you are. Um, Australia, the rest of these are, are the United States, but, you know, some of these, it's weird to me, lionfish are things that, you know, used to be really expensive, right, I think. Um, boa constrictors, both of these started out as pets. Um, how did Japanese honeysuckle get over here? Anybody know? Yeah, it was game and fish. Game and fish? Yeah. Erosion control. Erosion control. And browse. Probably does a decent job of that. It just gets gets out of hand, right? Uh, cane toad in Australia, I think it's called. Yeah. Um, zebra mussels. But what makes them invasives? So. USD says invasives are non-native or alien to the ecosystem species under consideration, and their introduction causes or is likely to cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. Okay. But that's pretty broad. And when when I think about it, I don't know, it gets this gets hairy for me pretty quickly, okay? Because I'm going to talk about a few things about how part two could be viewed. How about these things? Non-native. <laughs> Non-native, but why two different pictures of bees? Anybody know? One of these is considered invasive. One is not. Africanized, maybe? Yeah. European honeybee, Africanized honeybee, or killer bee. Um, at least this is what Google tells me. I kept looking at this and I was like, man, I could not tell those apart. But this picture did claim to be, and I found several, claimed to be this is a, an Africanized honeybee or a, uh, a killer bee. Killer bees because they'll swarm, okay? But non native. And I would argue if we go back in time a little bit, according to the definition, well, definitely. Uh, ecological harm, right? Uh, but at this point, we've decided we want them. Some of these things to me come down to the question of, is it a weed or not, right? And that's just really kind of a question of my own value judgment, right? Or your own value judgment. I would argue any of these could fit under invasive, depending on where you go and where they are, okay? These are all things that are frequently in non-native regions, right? Um, that one's native, but kind of in this monoculture, kind of feels like it fits part of the part two, right? There are definitely people who would say this causes harm in terms of corn syrup or definitely causes harm to environments in terms of ecology can. Apples are non-native. Potatoes are from the new world, but have been taken, have definitely caused economic and um, human harm in different contexts throughout uh, throughout the world. I mean, ask Ireland. Ooh, hello. 
Um, coffee, of course, is perfect, and um, <laughs> we shouldn't judge it in any way. That's right. All right, how about these guys? Does anybody know what those are? Finches. They are finches, specifically. Darwin's finches on um, well, Galapagos. Galapagos. Thank you. Non-native. Would we call them invasive? Now, we think one gravid female or a small flock of birds got blown from South America to the Galapagos, and then from that one finch sort of <laughs> bred and evolved and uh, adapted and s split out into all these different species. Anybody here want to call them an invasive to the Galapagos? Probably not, right? Well, that's weird, but they're not from there, right? And they definitely filled out ecological net niches and changed the ecology there, but we don't call them invasive. And I think it comes down to this, a question of what is natural? We might say, well, the, the finches got there naturally, right? They were blown there by a wind or something. But my question is this, what does it mean to be natural versus non-natural? To me, it just comes down to are humans involved. But why do we consider the activities of humans non-natural? I wonder about this. These ants are not going to eat these leaves. Anybody know what they're going to do with them? Raise fungi, maybe. Yes, they're going to take them down into the ground, and they're going to farm fungi that they're going to eat. Okay, boy, that feels like farming to me, right? Only we call this natural. We call this, um, this is doubly unnatural because this is clearly also a stage photo. Those aren't real people. I mean, they are real people, but, well, they're actors, so I don't know if they're real people. It's a joke. Please don't send <laughs> actors. I'm, I wanted to be an actor for a while. No, it wasn't. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> That's a good point. Okay, you get, guess where I'm going here? Who made this? Beavers. Beavers. But natural, non-natural. Well, we're doing very similar things, right? If we go forward, we go like, well, we can even diagram the inside of them. Here's this one. It produces electricity. This one produces a home for beavers, right? They've got structure internally, they're doing things, but somehow this guy's work is natural. This lady's work, because she's an engineer, <laughs> is unnatural. That may actually be true. I've met a lot of engineers. Be um, careful. No, it's a joke. <laughs> I know. I do that every day. So this is the question, right? I think it comes down to this. Humans can't go anywhere without changing stuff, OK? If you look at where human, when humans go to a new continent, within a few hundred or thousand years, all the megafauna are dead. Coincidence? Mm, it looks like no. It looks like we cause the extinction of stuff wherever we go. But, uh, oh, here's another one. We've been doing this for uh, tens of thousands of years. These are more recent. These are in the last couple of hundred years. Passenger pigeon, the dodo, uh, sea cow, and this is not an actual black rhino, but I couldn't get a picture of one, but this is a, a regular a white rhino that's been in the mud, but we killed off the black rhino right over the past couple hundred years too. Most of these for meat, some for sport. But in the 165 million years that the dinosaurs existed, is it possible that some of them caused the extinction of each other? I'm going to guess yes. You can't see it in the fossil record. We don't know. Okay, that's a long period of time. I'm going to guess that it happened. Is that extinction natural or non-natural? Are the extinctions we cause natural or non-natural? Doesn't matter. I don't know. This is just me asking some questions. These guys, these species went extinct, but this class did not extinct. It became this. Okay, so. Over time, how many, what percentage of species on the planet that have existed are extinct? Anybody know that one? Way over 99.99. Okay, almost every species that's existed on this planet is extinct in some way, either by dying off 
We're simply changing into something else over that time. Sometimes they change into these, right? This is how we have an idea that this stuff existed. This is the geologic time chart. <clears throat> we talk often, I'm, I'm thinking about the context of invasives in terms of ecology and how humans are changing the planet, right? We have a new word, the Anthropocene. Uh, this idea that we will create an extinction event that can be seen in the record, okay? And that seems like a big deal, except every line on this chart is an extinction event. Or something where a whole bunch of new species show up where they were not there before, okay? The really big extinctions are here, well, here, here, and here. This is the one right before the dinosaurs. This is the one right at the end of the dinosaurs. And this is us, way up there. So it feels like a lot of hubris to me to talk about what humans are doing to the planet, right? I mean, a lot worse has happened in the past. That doesn't mean I'm saying that it's okay what we're doing. I'm just saying, you know, maybe we need to put these things in context once in a while. Even the planet itself changes. I have a question. During Pangea, were there invasives? I mean, would we have said that in any way? And I think the answer is no, because it looks to me like feels like we're only counting things as invasives when we brought them there, right? I think that seems to be one of the markers. But we bring things all over the place all the time, right? I mean, this is just kind of what humans do. Again, I'm not trying to make a judgment as to whether this is good or bad. I'm just trying to rethink it. <clears throat> things that you eat today, everything you eat, almost everything you eat, is a GMO. Right? Humans change things they touch. That's sort of what we do. Corn was this before Native Americans sort of pushed it to this, and it's become much larger under uh, more recent husbandry. Um, every apple you've ever eaten, almost certainly, was a clone. That wasn't grown from a seed. It was grown from a cutting. Um, but these are from Kazakhstan. We consider them, I mean, American is apple pie. Well, that tree wasn't here <laughs> pre-Columbian. Um, wheat, bananas, uh, broccoli, kale, kohlrabi, Brussels sprouts, all from different things. Everything we touch, we modify, okay? Now, it's not genetic, genetic modification as in the lab, but we're definitely changing the allele frequency of these plants. That's a modification. We're changing it. Is, does that make these things that wouldn't have existed without human intervention, invasive in their own territory, in a way. We change these guys into these guys. We change these guys into these. Quick question, horses, native to the, United, native to the Americas or no? I had this one wrong before. Somebody's saying yes. How, what do you mean by yes? They were originally North America. And then? Came back with the Spanish. Yes, I didn't know that till today. I was getting ready to show this as Arabia. But horses were originally in the Americas, migrated across the Bering Land Bridge, were killed off by pre Columbian humans, we think, driven to extinction, probably eaten, and then reintroduced. I just, I thought they were invasive and turned out they're sort of moved out, moved back in kind of thing. We're about thinking of what does it mean to be an invasive species? I'll, I'm not saying, I, I don't know what this answer is. It just became an interesting question to me. Okay? Non native or alien to the ecosystem under consideration and whose introduction causes or is likely to cause economic or environmental harm or harm to human health. By that definition, here's what I would call the most invasive species. <laughs> Even when they don't look like this, even when they just look like this. These are the most non-native things on the planet, and they're the ones who are moving everything around. I don't have a prescription here. I don't know if I'm saying, hey, should we look at things differently? It's just every time we're like assassinating honeysuckle, which I can get on board with, it's fine. I do wonder, like, 
It's kind of our fault. It's, it's definitely our fault. It's there in the first place. I don't think we're going back. We're not, we're not going to undo what humans have done to the planet at this point. We're not going backwards. I think better, the, what all, I'm, all I'm asking for is a new lens by which to look at these things and say, like, what do we want and, and, and uh, why are we doing what we're doing? Why are we doing something and then undoing it? That's it. That's, that's, that's my only question. Just a new lens through which to look at these things. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. I'll log out.